Okay, so it's 2024 and we're supposed to check what airplane we're flying before we fly it. I didn't check this flight because I don't want that anxiety. The last time I booked a flight, you guessed it, I was booked on the exact make, plane, and model everyone told me I should avoid. And even though I'd booked my flight well in advance, it wasn't until I got to my seat on the airplane that I realized I had the only seat on the flight with a busted patched window. Nonetheless, we lived to see another day and this flight I ended up in Amsterdam. I think I'm finally coming to terms with the fact that I don't think I'll ever be a cute airport girl. I just don't think it's ever going to happen for me. I'm going to have cute luggage, but it's just, it's never going to be perfect. You know, it's never going to be perfect. Professionals now, baby, baby, professionals. The really cool thing though, is I feel like I'm finally coming to terms with just getting off the airplane, getting onto the airport train, doing my makeup wherever I have to do it. In this case, the airport train and going outside to actually live my life. We have such a small time to explore the places we travel to and I'm just not gonna be held back anymore by how I look. Put on your rain jacket and tie the hoodie so it's like stuck to your face. Sometimes you're gonna look like a nub and that's fine. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Honestly, it feels so good to be a nub. Like no one talks about how good it feels to just be in a random country with comfy clothes, wandering around, enjoying the city. I'm buying some flowers. They're so. 28. That's how many days I've been on Duolingo. I'm currently learning German and there's really no point to me learning German other than conning my way into Bergheim someday and the off chance I stop to Tesla charge in... Ich bin nicht so gut. This song made me a bad bitch as a kid. This song. Life's comedic timing never fails though, because tell me why I practiced my German and built up the courage to speak to the next German person I know in German, only to find out that he wants to communicate solely in Italian. Moment. Moment. Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh. I did. Okay. I didn't need it. Yeah. That's good. Y'all, the Super one second. person I try to speak to in German, in Germany, he only speaks me in Italian. I was so confused. Yeah, pizza is so good. <laughs> driving <laughs> that would be a liability we bought these yesterday these are Eva's flowers show them off you got her flowers from Amsterdam <laughs> hopefully they last until we get to Switzerland because I'd like to have them in the room at the very least I want to take a picture with them like on the side of the road <sighs> all right Let's get on the road. Y'all, whenever you have the chance to go on a road trip, do not say no to the opportunity because even if 80% of the journey is just cornfields and trees and freeways and autobahns, I promise you, if you look for it, adventure is just a freeway exit away. I have the idea. Mm -hmm. This type of silence it's priceless. I wish I could stay in this forever. And I guess in a way I could. I mean, I could sell everything and move to the mountains like I wanted to a couple years ago. And I think I would be happy. 
I guess everyone says the same thing. You have forever to be old, but only so little time to be young. I guess if I have 70 more years of something, then maybe life like this can wait. I guess I'm just a bit conflicted because to me, this seems like the end goal. This seems like retirement. This seems like what everyone wants. A slow life. Why do we wait forever to give this to ourselves? You wait, you gotta go flat. Okay, okay, okay. Uh -huh. oh. Ready? I guess for now, the solution is to soak up as much of this as I can get. And someday, maybe this will be forever. Okay, enough with the seriousness. Let's get to the hotel. feeling of finally getting to your destination after a long road trip, it's kind of like your mind is still in fight or flight mode from driving so long and you're a little bit crazy, a little bit delirious. It's just a special feeling. It's not unlimited with those, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty thick though. Yeah, but it's all non-Kit Kats. More chocolate though? Yeah. It's kind of like a dog with Zoomies. Miami, how the fuck we feeling, baby? You know, some of us thought maybe we wouldn't make it to Switzerland tonight, but as it seems, we get there no matter what. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Locks for me is for cool people. It's filled with fancy Europeans that drink Aperol spritzes at Apre and snowboarders that compete at X Games. It's a place where you'll just be fighting for your life trying to get down the mountain and then you'll look behind you and get passed up by a team of 12 well-dressed eight-year-olds all with their ski coach. And then there's me. I can't even ride a cup. I don't want to talk down about myself, but I just started snowboarding a couple years ago and I'm used to going to Big Bear Mountain where the only thing you're drinking is a spicy margarita, if you're lucky, because a lot of the times they forget to restock the bar. And then you're stuck with forcing yourself to take a shot of whiskey before you head down the mountain and almost throw up in your mouth. It's real classy. The funny thing is it's all about perspective and I'm sure the people that are used to coming to this mountain every year, for them it's just another day. But to me, coming to this mountain as an outsider, it's beautiful, it's intimidating, but truly magical. As long as it's not like clumpy. Yeah, there's some like clumpy parts over here. This is therapeutic. Now you have to be careful with this mountain because sometimes it's so beautiful, it'll make you make stupid decisions. Like waiting until the last gondola to get down the mountain. Olaf thought it would be a good idea to skip the last main gondola down the mountain and take the lift chair instead that no one seemed to be operating because the view seemed better. And because we took the lift, where did we end up? Getting stuck on the lift. We got stuck on the lift. Can you hear me? 
me? Yeah. As long as we know it's uh, we're not gonna get stuck, that's perfect. Yeah. Okay. Th You'll be good, bro. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Just kind of wondering if we're actually stuck or they just like close down the lift. At least we got a good view of locks, Switzerland. Huh? Could be worse places to get stuck. I need to reserve my phone battery. <laughs> we're gonna be out here all night. <laughs> we're turning into Frozen? No. What is that film called again? Is there Frozen? Oh, I don't know. Is there a movie about someone getting stuck on, stuck on a lift? Yeah. Fucking hell. Like the wolf comes in. The, the wolf? Wolves? I'm like, hmm. If I were to jump. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, here we go. We're moving. Woo! We're on the move again. There's literally no one on this lift but us. There's not a single soul. After all that stress of almost being stranded on a lift for the entire night, there's really only one thing left to do. Party. And if that doesn't work, party more. Yesterday was officially the last day of the season, so now the mountain is technically closed. And that means that last night, the entire city of Locks went hard. One Krabby Patty extra onion. One crying Johnny coming up. You have to please do like, like hold on, hold on. Do a, wait. Ching! <laughs> please do that. In slow motion. <gasps> Olaf is here helping shoot and photograph his friends at the Beyond Metal snowboarding team, and I got lucky enough to get invited to just literally be a fly on the wall to this insane experience. They have the entire mountain to themselves for a week, and even though I'm not going to be snowboarding anywhere as hard as they will, I came here to just enjoy the scenery, reconnect with nature, and hopefully make some art. resort is a memory I'll never forget and within a couple hours of being up there a freak snowstorm broke out but I didn't want to miss the opportunity to snowboard this so I did and I got stuck and this is Olaf rescuing me and getting me a cup from the bottom of the mountain I'm here with uh, Ava Godowski we up baby you know what do you think about today? What do you, uh, what are you, what are your feelings? What are your thoughts? Uh, the conditions were subpar, but we had, you know, pretty fire time out there. Just had fun, you know, ripped a few, ripped a few fun ones. So it was. A All right, you heard it here first. We ripped a couple of fun ones. Okay, so if you're shooting snowboarding, you would assume the more snow, the better. But the sad thing is, it actually ended up freakishly snowstorming the entire trip, which meant avalanche warnings and really dangerous conditions. So the guys ended up having to snowboard in some pretty icy conditions, and I just brought my DJ decks up the mountain to keep the vibes high. Oh. 
For a second, I was kind of sad because I had brought all my gear all the way from California here and I was really expecting to snowboard a ton, but I kind of realized I don't think I was meant to go on this trip to snowboard. Being surrounded by so many genuine and amazing personalities, all staying in the same hotel, I don't know, just like kind of brought me back to college and it felt like we were all in our own little bubble. And I honestly don't think I've been this relaxed in years. And it was really nice. Oh yeah, the entire basement of this hotel is a club and they have DJ gear. So pretty much every night, I'd end up here. Last night, the snow was so intense that we woke up this morning and we were told we couldn't even go up the mountain. Luckily, we have two things that can take anyone's sadness away, Aperol spritzes and tattoos. <laughs> Underpants, you killed it. <laughs> Supposed to be that red? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're trying to decide where to get this tattoo. And it's so hard because there's like so many good places for it. And it's getting me excited because I kind of want like, I want so many. Basically we have this spot, but I think my arm is like a little too small for this area to like make sense. Because when I bend my arm and stuff, it's going to be kind of like, I don't know. I think it looks better here. And I would like more visible tattoos. I feel like the tattoos I have are kind of like, you don't really see, you don't really notice them. So it would be nice to have something a little more like prominent, but it also is scary. Cause it's like, it's a tattoo. Getting a manta ray. And I feel like, honestly, I'm really excited to get a manta ray tattoo because it's, it's a long story, but my favorite animal for, since I was like six years old. Some of my best memories have a manta ray involved in them. You know, no matter where this goes in my body, I'm gonna be happy because it's a memory of mine that like, it's it's gonna stay pure forever. We gotta think like, say I'm wearing like a sexy party dress. Like, do I want a fucking manta ray on my arm? Yep, that's cute. I think it's gonna go here. <laughs> Just, yes! Yeah, yeah, it's gonna go here. <laughs> Can you take a picture so we know where it's gonna go? Okay, let's do this. Let's get a tattoo, baby. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, that's super easy to just like. I wish I had more space on my forearms. It was the <laughs> nicest tats. Yeah. What yeah. was like the hardest on your body? Like what was Stomach. The... Really? Yeah. Stomach was the gnarliest for me. Really? I think the gnarliest floppy can tattoo I did it two weeks ago is armpit. We did like a full spider web in the armpit that was so gnarly, yeah. like thick lines. Ooh. And it was a girl too, and she like, she took it like there was no pain at all. And I was like, are you good? <laughs> That's crazy. Really, you know? I feel like I have a really high pain tolerance, but like, who knows? If I did that. Girls have a better pain tolerance than guys, 100%. Yeah. Do you have big ass dudes walk in and get yeah. a tad and almost cry, and then you have a girl that just turned 18 this tall, and <laughs> she's like, I want my full stomach. <laughs> How's it feel? All good? Yeah. Nice! Yeah, thank That's you! It. So nice. cool. You like it? Yes. That is nice. Yeah, that was pretty easy to do. Yeah. I'm like, ready for the next one. <laughs> this just makes me want. One more. More like around it. Oh, no, 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 no. Nice. Thank you. So do you like it? Yes, yes. Easy. That was the easiest to do. Oh my god. <laughs> Olaf, you're next. You're next. <laughs> oh, it's uh, a... Uh, Andrew. Andrew. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice one. Thanks. Thanks.
All my tattoos are really thin and I want them to be a little thicker, so. One thing about snowboarders is they like to party, and I can't lie, they do it well. Great pass from Truth. You've been playing an excellent game. Do you have any advice yeah, for the young you, ones you. out there? Yeah, you know they uh, we sub they sub me in, and I just been uh, just been going my hardest tonight, and just putting putting my heart on the line. You know, at the end of the day, it's just about hitting the cups, hitting the throws, and. Uh, the young ones out there, you got a lot of little ones looking up to you. Do you have any advice for them entering the beer pong game? Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about just uh, having fun. You know, it's not about the sport itself; it's about having fun. As as you're growing up, just just continue to love the sport for itself. Nice. Looking forward and, to seeing you to the finals. Yeah, thank and, you, thank you. Yes! And you just saw it first right here, gang. My name is Avi Utowski. I'm interviewing for the uh, 2026 Olympic Games of Beer Pong. Yeah. How are you looking at winning this finale? I don't. I just, I don't. It's, uh, yeah. If you think too much about it, you're going to suck. So just don't think about it. Amazing answer. Did you warm up your wrists before this game? No, no, you know, no warm up today. It was, uh, it was straight into it. All right, thanks so much. Have a yeah, good game. Thank you. Ciao. Thank Ciao. you. Now from a word from our first sponsor, Hyundai. First shot of the day. Let's see. Oh, he went to fakey. Oh! oh! Double bounce. Okay, okay. Things are heating up. Let's and see the Dolly rebuttal. Look, the pre-party was cool, but now it's time for my party. Today we're driving back to Amsterdam, which means nine hours in the car the same way we came. And clearly, we're running late. One of the guys was like, yeah, like I'm going up to St. Moritz for like a couple weeks. And I was like, St. Moritz? It's like, when does the season end? He's like, oh, like, like in May. Yeah. And my eyes twinkled for a second. I was like, we're going to St. Moritz tomorrow uh. to snowboard to get one more day in. I need to be fucking for real. Even though we were leaving today, I couldn't resist one last opportunity to snowboard and hit a jump. We outside working. We out putting that in that work. Well, Love's gonna test the jump before I do it. So let's see how this goes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh! Yeah. I got this. This is kind of scary. Sheesh. Oh! Ja, flink. Dette jeg er flinkt. Flink. Flink. Somewhere in Switzerland, I went into this vlog 
No, wait. I went into this trip thinking things were going to be completely different. I thought on this trip I was going to snowboard a ton and I was just going to get things done and check things off my ever-growing list, but in the end, I did none of that. What I did do, though, is live. Like, truly live. And I don't want to sound cheesy, but I lived on this trip. I fucking lived like I haven't lived in a long time. I don't know what I found, but I found some things on this trip for sure. I think when it comes down to it, sometimes avalanche warnings are going to happen and they're going to ruin all of your plans. But if you just let go and trust life, touch the water. Feels nice. I think life knows what it's doing. 